and YouTube. Thanks to voice on the uh, so uh, we ask you that uh, keep the conversation nonpartisan and loving, viable. Uh, welcome, Bridie. Hi, I love you guys. Bridie! Hey. And summon Don, Donna. Oh, Donna! Donna! <laughs> Donna from Sign World. Hello. <laughs> wow. Awesome. Uh, so, Donna was just letting you know that this event is being recorded and going live into YouTube. So, we're asking That's for fine. partisan love and inclusive behaviors. Uh, and our topic tonight is the puzzle of menopause. Um, so, we have a couple prompts, but eight puzzle. Those of you who are new, uh, let's see, 6179, still a little quick. Okay, um, and if you want, um, maybe put in the chat your name and where you're puzzling on the planet, if you're so inclined. Welcome. Ah, Karen. Hey, Karen. Newbie. Can, cool. can you hear me? Welcome awesome. back. <laughs> yeah, I think I have to use my earbuds. So, um, yeah, um, now I feel very involved. <laughs> oh, awesome. we're so happy to have you back. We know you're a speed puzzler, so we scrambled some pieces before you returned. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, no, I'm not that Karen puzzles. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just another Karen who puzzles. <laughs> very funny. Uh, and I want in Sarun. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Welcome. Uh -huh. Can you hear me? Sarah Jane. It's actually Diane. Diane! Hey! <laughs> Excellent position in the yeah. house. Okay. Hi, Diane. Nice to hear you. Good to hear you. Uh, oh, another doctor in the house. Welcome, Anna. Yay! Thank you. Yay, super. So, Anna mentioned that this is being recorded live to an, an inclusive conversation tonight. Um, feel okay. free to write in the chat where you're puzzling if you want on the planet. Since we got a great spread from Minneapolis to uh, Portsmouth, it looks like. Do we have anyone on the West Coast yet? Have the West Coasters come in? I don't know. Okay. So, uh, Ronnie, did you come up with anything brilliant? Yeah. What? You know, if you're in either perimenopause or menopause or medically induced menopause, what was the most expecting because nobody warned you of that question? Biggest surprise. My biggest surprise, which I mentioned earlier, was um, uh, in my pubic area. Hey, in status. Other, um, you can put them in the. I will share that my biggest surprise was just doctor was an any of this. She just outsourced the New York Times article saying that women should be able to have care for this. So later I have care for it. Oh no! I don't think you're the only one who talked to your OB. <laughs> Yeah, I was expecting you to, <laughs> to someone else. I was expecting no. my male doctors never want to do anything with. I see menopause. I think it's just like medical care in the Boston area where there are so many, and it's just you know PCPs or sometimes like that. Yeah. Do do fellow physicians? Okay, this is maybe. I don't know if you want to answer this. When they see a one physician too, do you like pull the physician card <laughs> or is that like, how do you? No, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I don't really know how to answer. I probably okay. do without realizing that I do, but in general, I try to let the doctors, there's some autonomy, but yeah. Nice. That's me. That's so exciting. Uh, other surprises? 
I, I, I can go. I, I don't think it's a, a surprise to a lot of people, but I couldn't believe how much I could actually. <laughs> Yeah. The actual volume. You can <laughs> water. Yeah, for bathe. <laughs> um, I definitely was surprised when I was in like um like pill induced menopause that half of me was hot, it was freezing cold. Extremities in the middle of the night. Because I've been cold my whole life, and I was kind of looking for. Wait, were your extremities the ones that were? No, it was like literally the front half of my body was freezing, and the back half of my body was that bifurcation of the body. No, no fun. Yeah. Uh, and we have an O positive for turning me on to. <laughs> Other things that people like. Or find efficacious. What is it? What's that? What is that? Um, it's it, um, it's a herbal supplement. It's sold in either um, like gummy rings, or um, I think they also have it in capsules if you don't want sugar. Fun. And it has chase berry or vitex B vitamins B and B six and D3, I think, and a couple other things. Um, and it just really works. Plus, it tastes good. It's not actually so, a gummy, it, like a. Thing. Sorry. The... I was just going to say if you Google O positive mano, you should find it. I, f I was walking with someone yesterday who really likes estercone. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it, I'm spelling it correctly. Um, what, so if you have a partner, what kind of support have you asked for or they have? Great question. My husband bought a book called It's Not Hot in Here. That's hilarious. <laughs> Educate himself. I mean, did oh. anyone's like partner start playing some Nelly? It's getting hot in here. <laughs> I have not seen that book. I mean, Rick certainly hasn't brought it home. Books. Ronnie, can I offer a second question? While people no. are yes, of course you can. Why are you partner asking? support? Are there books in the, including "It's Not Hot in Here" that people feel are? I know the. Silence is deafening. No. <laughs> Diane, I'm putting you on the spot. Yeah, so I had pretty mild um, sim um Yay. I know, I know. So I'm, I'm sitting here feeling a little um, like I have some... <laughs> um, for me, was that um, I was just so relieved to be and kind of cyclic emotional, to be on that cyclic emotional roller coaster that there was a little bit of relief that some of that was gone, which is, um, I don't know, just a different kind of surprise. Um, so I didn't really need to seek that much in terms of um, supplements or uh, I didn't do a lot of reading other than what I counsel other people. Um, so I don't know. I, 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 <laughs> okay. I'm wondering if anyone else has had similarly mild symptoms. I have it wonky. And I think that I'm typically uh, simply, uh, surprised that I'm still surprised. <laughs> so like, yeah, this is still, um, it's, it's surprising, but I'm like, 
where's my period? I'm like, oh, maybe it'll come next month. Because it just decides when it wants, what it wants to do. Um, and that's weird. I have honestly been waiting for menopause since I started bleeding because my periods have been so bad. Yeah. And part of me not opting for a hysterectomy is. Mm. I'm 42. Sure what I'm going to go through, but my doctor was like, oh, yeah, you'll go through it a little bit sooner because you had a hysterectomy, but I still have my ovaries. And I said, well, how am I going to know when I'm going through it? And she said, thanks. Okay. <laughs> my blue pieces. Stop it. I can't write. To oh, that's that. probably me. I'm, I'm Righty thieving? Oh, well, I can't. I can't move any pieces. I mean, I can move pieces. I can't. Maybe. Pardon? Is there like a weird oil on them? I just can't write to if you tap and nothing happens? It looks like I'm picking them up off the board and then they just drop back up. Like I see okay. the little oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> and then they don't do anything. You so I see just like, I'm just looking for pieces that are nearby that maybe want to go together in the <laughs> place where they're around to you so far. So that was fast. Or you just try popping out glitch. Okay. And even though Mercury's not in retrograde yet. We've already had some fun. Ronnie, I just want to give us props for not doing this while that. <laughs> just <laughs> lunar eclipse energy. Yeah. Okay, what, okay, what about Earth family support? Thank who, you for who actually had a productive conversation with me? Patriarch. My dad bought me this thing called an aura that's like a. <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure it helped, but it was very sweet. It's a. Um, like a smartwatch and it will cool it like sends these like pulsating waves of coolness huh. to your wrist wow so yeah it's called an aura a-u-r-a -A? yep is that what's cool. called am i making that up i mix i'm i'm making that up aura is the is the digital frame what is the name of the thing oh my god I'm so sorry. It's You're called something else. It'll pass. Um, I'm going to Google it right now. That brings up for me, while you are looking for that, the brain fog and, like, inability to remember words. Yeah. All the time. I know. Yeah. It's called an ember wave. E-M-B-R. And then new word, W-A-V-E. An ember weight? things do like so it cools your wrist for a moment and then like not what I'm, is it supposed to do but what does it actually do does it cool you down i don't know it's that it made me feel better trying not to do hormone replacement therapy and then and then i think that article came to me that was like just you know the the women's health study was really you know not it wasn't the right study and really for many women taking be safe. So I ended up there and it got rid of, I was like waking up every night, like kind of in a sweat and it wasn't that it was that often it was, but waking up once a night and then not being able to go back to sleep was not that great. Yeah, that's enough. Of course. Yeah. Um, I'm curious. So, with review... Sorry, Ronnie. Oh, go ahead. Overall review of that um, gadget for your wrist. Worth it? Not worth it? Uh, Give it. A... I mean, I probably wouldn't have bought it myself because it costs like I don't know at least a couple hundred bucks, and I was like, I don't really know that this thing is gonna, you know, how could just your wrist really help? Um. So I probably wouldn't um low and yeah if, you, if you're like well maybe maybe i'll just you know i don't want to call it placebo effect but if you hmm. just feel like well i'm gonna do something that might help and i don't have a fun thing to try okay 
but yeah, and there was a he gave it to the after... um... I think it was before. Did he have opinions about that article? At first, he was reluctant. So for full disclosure, he's an endocrinologist, but he's not a reproductive endocrinologist. So at first, he was like, oh, you should avoid estrogen if you can. And then, yeah, it's, um, I mean, that article came out, but I went very comfortable with it. But everyone's different. I mean, it, it all depends on your risk of, like, breast cancer and your risk of cardiovascular disease. So that's the issue. If, if you're not at high risk, then it's safe. But if you have, like... Migraines with aura, if nobody knows that one. You have migraines with aura, you should not be on estrogen. though isn't isn't the other factor um how long you're looking to be on it or how long you're gonna actually i, I thought that study is that yeah. study was old and it was medications we don't use anymore or is yep. it different that's um, all true and i think the women in that study were generally older so were probably higher risk to begin with and so yeah. like i think now the recommendation is like if you fall into a you know low risk category, you're just like perimenopausal, like early fifties. Then I think not stay on it for like decades ago. Right. Did. So yeah, because I thought that in my memory might be off, but I thought it was like you know if you needed it up to five or ten years, that would be okay. And then like come on, that like you probably don't need it. I think it's a good while you could. Then some recommendations are saying. It should be okay. Yeah. yeah. You know. I think that's right. I can totally understand people, you know, like everybody's different and what you're experiencing is different. So I can understand a uh, sort of way of framing it is, you know, I'm going to do the least um, sort of um, the least uh, active sort of forms of of intervention first and then you know if that doesn't work excuse me you're, you're not menopausal <laughs> uh or perimenopausal uh or even female um <laughs> then you know then i would go to so i did try this um this herbal thing this meno which works really well for me and the other thing, uh, my sister, you were asking before about matriarchs. I, I have talked to my mom about this, but I've talked mostly to my older sister, who's like four years ahead of me. And she, like, infusions out of, it was very cooling. I think it's a little bit of work, but, um, <laughs> but she gave it to me to drink, and it does really work. So, I mean, I just think that, and I wanted to try the less, um, the less, uh, uh, I can't, I'm trying to trying to go with the interventions first. Yes, I I spoke to my mother because I am the older sister, so I spoke to my mom because I'm in that. Mm -hmm. So I did talk to my mom to be like, all right, well, you know, they say that talk to your mom because you're probably gonna be similar. Um, right. The difference being, my mom had five children, I have zero. Um, so, but I asked her how bad and what hers was like, and she tried all the non-pharmacological things, um, because her mother had breast cancer. So mm -hmm. what I found that I, I, I find interesting and, um, she did a try to back to help with hot flashes because her hot flashes, she said were horrible. They were the worst thing ever. And she tried them, but then when she saw her doctor again, her liver enzymes were off. And they, they were like, have you started drinking? And she's like, no. And they're like, well, what would you do? She's like, well, I've been taking back to normal. So now I'm like, all right, I'm not even going to bother ever trying flaxseed. Oh, my gosh. That's, but she she did tell me that her, her hot flashes were so bad, she tried everything, nothing worked. And then she saw, a, I think her doctor wouldn't give her stuff. And she went and saw a nurse practitioner. I was like, I can't live like this at all. I can't function. I This is like the worst thing I've ever been through. And so they finally gave her a little bit of estrogen. So I've mentally prepared that if I'm anything like my mom, 
it's not going to be a fun that medication you you get it i'm going to look into you because that like black ohash okay but she doesn't yeah. you know, as long as it doesn't have black seed because i like i i just avoid black seed like i, I don't no and i don't know if it would affect me that way but also like in a lot of ways i'm my mother's daughter <laughs> so okay. yeah that makes sense But I think those are also things that we don't think about, right? Like they tell us, or you would think, in a lot of medications and stuff. Then, for some people, maybe. Well, I think the lesson is that these herbal or you know um, homeopathic or um, traditional um, interventions. Right. Look at it. I wonder if anyone had any sort of religious injunctions or descriptions or, uh, what, okay, help me with the word. Oh, brain. This too shall pass. <laughs> Are you okay. talking about ritual or? We have a variety of sort of religious backgrounds represented at the point I feel like my own context was discussed period the end it's all a shame project but i'm wondering if there's you know, a different framework that well people... i remember uh so i was raised going to church my mother is pretty churchy uh it's a pretty uh liberal kind of low-key denomination united church of christ uh which is like next to unitarian uh, low keyness, and um, but like when I was going through confirmation, I remember like reading, you know, when you're menstruating, you shouldn't water plants, and <laughs> I was all kinds of crazy stuff in there. Uh, I don't believe this is true. Does this mean that the whole Bible is a bunch of pride? <laughs> um, but you know, I mean, I, I don't think that there are always good messages coming from. I mean. I'm assuming that some of that stuff that is in the Bible was channeled through some man, you know, who didn't understand uh, and didn't want to. But like they took it forward. <laughs> like I, I wonder why why you wouldn't water the garden. It makes me curious about like what is it? Because you're it? unclean and you'll kill it. But it's fertility. Like, I mean, the whole thing is a function of your fertility, which should help things live, right? Seriously. That, 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 I mean, I well, I mean, if you look at the babies, are, you know, obsolete? Well, I don't think that's our primary. Absolutely not. I don't agree with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I understand. Like, I was still living with my parents when my mother started going through. Her, like, her reaction to me in that time period has, like, terrified me for my, how I might react to my own children. Because hmm. all of her unbridled rage was to still be, actually. <laughs> it's okay. Did anyone, when someone older was going through menopause, and did they have? Yeah, I was with my mom. I was in high school, and she was going through it, and she had chronic migraines all the time, growing up from the migraines, and just having to sit in the dark, like, mm -hmm. all the time, and she was crying and miserable, and it was terrifying for me, and I was like, great, <laughs> looking forward to this. Um, I don't think I'm going to have that same kind of life. But yeah, this is a different time too. She's under a lot more stress than I think I'm going to be when I go through it. My mom did HRT for a long time, so I don't, I don't really remember. I mean, other than hot flashes, I don't think I really remember any side effects that she was going through.
I lived with my mom, and I don't remember, but also I was a teenager and probably too self <laughs> to maybe notice. Or maybe she thought it was, she's pretty stoic. Like, good chance. Like, when she told me how horrible it was when I talked about it, cause it's like, I didn't notice. <laughs> First, I was for discomfort is, um, maybe she... Yeah. I'm busy. You need to be quiet. I will take you later. Later. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Val wants to puzzle with us. I'm sorry. I thought I muted myself. <laughs> we like dogs. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, <for you. laughs> Okay. Jesse, are you still here? I'm here. I'm just I'm wondering not I'm... functioning with the puzzle very well. I'm still looking. You have Did any... you post menopausal questions for me? I'm wondering, like, if you're, I don't know why, like, gave you any advice, you know, with a kind of different cultural perspective, no, or if it was I didn't, not. I did from her, um, where she would be having hot flashes. <clears throat> I think it's humbling, because for me, you know, I never really had a bad talk to other people who did. Or, like, I I didn't, from my, you know, I have a really keen sense of smell. And, like, I always kind of felt like I didn't get that stinky if I worked out or whatever. But uh -huh. all my body really um, bothered me, like, my own odor. It just is like I had the body of a man. It was really disgusting mm -hmm. for me to go through. But if they could invent something that would change your body chemistry and change the odor, that would be wonderful. What um, odor would you want to have? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you could decide with that kind of invention. You could decide weekly. <laughs> A weekly or this week? Rose. <laughs> Blue Lotus. Was like from the night sweats, like when you woke up? It's just like your chemistry. You just, I don't know. To me, I just smell different than I ever did. So. Even, even when you're not having like hot, oh, because you don't have hot flashes last night, so. Not really anymore too much, just, but um, I think it's just with the hormones, you know, you don't have as many, or like more masculine or something. I don't know. Yeah. I think I, I might have told you this joke already, Sarah Jane, but I did see one time this female middle-aged comedian that said, um, you know, when you go through, when you get your period for the first time, every, oh, you're changing into a woman. <laughs> but then I was starting to go through menopause, and I went to my doctor, and he said, oh, you're going through the change. <laughs> And she said, but nobody will t would tell me what I'm changing into. And then the dad <laughs> changing into my father. Anyway. Okay. Do you have other, like, cultural depictions that amuse you? Me, you know. Maybe the antithesis of the Archie Bunker and Edith change episode, but something more contemporary to that comedian. The name of the artist who made the menopause bingo cards. The menopause bingo card? Yeah, I was like, I need to make a menopause bingo card. And then I Googled it. I'm like, oh, it already exists. Never mind. <laughs> what, what, what is the, what does it do? What does bingo do? What? So, what do you, <laughs> you know, like you, they, like the caller would you say, like, mark it off or missing pubic hair. I depends on how you how you play, right? You could do corner squares, yeah, and then people have patterns. 
<laughs> Karen just a piece of puzzle property. Wow. Puzzle talk. Uh oh, now I'm frozen. I actually pulled over that big, like, person thing and have been feeling a little guilty because somebody else oh. did all the work and then I pulled no. it in. Very satisfying. <laughs> Karen and Anna, thank you for modeling what we're trying to log off and get back in. <laughs> Diane, pop out, or she's still here? I'm still here. I don't want to put you in a cultural ghetto, but can I ask if there are any, like, special Armenian traditions around menopause? You know, us don't talk about it. That was certainly true in my family. Hmm. Um, and That's a good tradition. Silence. Um, and I don't know if you go back to, you know, the homeland and generations past, I'm sure women got together and talked about it, um, but that wasn't that, that that didn't translate into my family experience at all. Um, so yeah, yeah. The blood mysteries, you know, they're uh, kept in in. in I, I do think, I, I hope that's, that's going to be, none of this is discussed, right? Like, you're taught in school about getting your period, you have health issues, you have whatever. Um, you have a grown up in your other, other trans, I don't think most people are um, really educated. And I know, like, I have coworkers that don't vote, so I asked him, and he, he talked about it. But I, a lot of times, I bring it up, but I'm also, you know, I think that normalizing talking is healthy, especially when, you know, even if they told us when we were 13 and 14, and in 40 years, this is going to happen, we wouldn't have even seen Like, there's no, there are no commercials on tonight at 7.30 to watch what you've got coming for the next 15, 20 years. So I feel like it is a lot in the dark for a lot of us. And even though to navigate, like, like I get surprised, even though I know it still surprises me, like missing periods, that I'm missing periods. And it, but I, I it, it's tricky. And luckily I work with a few people that feel like a lot of people, it's not, I don't know if there is a society in which women it's normalized for women to talk about. They talk about this sort of stuff. I don't know. They have public service announcements. Like billboards? It would be great if you did. But... I think women were allowed to, you know, privately, like, before, like, patriarchy just didn't involve the men. Probably. And in 2024, it's hard for people to be together and lose. I mean, there was definitely a place for, like, the wisdom of family, but, like, nobody talked about how you got there. Like, there was definitely a, she's seen some things, like, great aunties and uncles and that generation. I think on some level, we all kind of tried to open up that discussion, like having friends of all, um, to be able to have those conversations. Yes, I feel, feel, yeah, I feel like that comes back to like women just navigating without talking with their friends, like without much guidance, right? There's, what are you going through? What are you going through? Your scale than just like being your Anna, thank you for joining us. Bye. I've been taking it upon myself because taking it upon myself because I'm your sister if I you know want to attack them.
I I just feel like like other people were saying like there just isn't a lot of preparation. But I've been talking to my to get them ready because <laughs> I feel like it, we have to start somewhere. Yeah. Although, I mean, that's to to hearing about it till it's upon you. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. I, I think my daughter appreciated the prep, mother, but I think my mother just blocked it all out. Like, I cause she probably doesn't remember it. I bet she does. <laughs> Written a lot of the past. I, I think in moments of stress, her coping mechanism is to, to, I think it would have been an interesting conversation in the moment while I was still in high school, but, um, I don't know that she was capable of talking about it. She's like, nobody was talking about or taking care of things. I felt really lost and alone and yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we have each other to talk to. Thank you, Sarah Jane and Ronnie. Thanks for showing up and talking. We're going to rebuild all the community so that we have places to talk with each other. I think that's part of the problem. Like, disjointed and doesn't have, like, the village kind of, or the tribe anymore.